Hello everybody, this is the Starving Martian, and today we are looking at this rather nice Samus uh, action figure from the Metroid series of video games. Uh, this thing here was put out, I believe, back in 2001 from uh, Joyride Studios. Now, Joyride Studios did a few really nice uh, collector pieces for Nintendo. We've already looked at one of them, which was the Luigi's Mansion figure. If you missed um, that review, it's a really nice figure. You can find it on a playlist I have, um, Video Game Icons. So just click on that. You'll be able to find Luigi and his mansion. But uh, today we're looking at Samus. And as I said, this is a really nice figure of the character from the popular um, video game series. I was just playing a little bit of Metroid Prime this morning. And so felt like uh, busting this uh, beauty out and showing her off to y'all so um so here we go this is uh samus aaron the famous bounty hunter from the metroid series of video games and this is a huge figure she stands about seven inches tall which is a really good size um makes her look very imposing very impressive just uh for comparison's sake we'll do this now get it out of the way here she is with our standard size figure here and uh, yeah so you can see she towers above um, the uh, Cadillacs and dinosaurs uh, Hannah Dundee who is about Jurassic Park human size and um, here she is next to Link from one of the more modern world of Nintendo figures so uh, the Samus figures in this line are just a hair taller than Link so you can see uh, she's definitely got some good size going to her, going on. Um, here she is with a Metroid from the smaller line of uh, World of Nintendo figures. And I think they scale pretty well together. Could even uh, put it on her head and have it you know sucking her energy there we go <laughs> now she has to roll into morph ball to get him off and here she is next to the giant size metroid and I think they scale pretty good together, too. This looks like uh, the one from the very end of uh, Super Metroid there, when you put them together. So, let's move this bad boy out of the way. Alright, so that was just to give you an idea of how big this figure is. Um, as I said, it looks really good on the shelf because it is so big. It's imposing. It's got bright, vibrant colors. It really stands out. So let's get in a little closer on some of our details. All right, I think they did a decent job on the paintwork on this figure. Um, they could have like some more small details, like this one spot right here should be black. Um, you know, in some of the more modern interpretations of the figure, you'll see um, some color running down here. For example, here's um, a Samus Amiibo. One of only two Amiibos I own because I hate the concept of having to pay extra for downloadable content on these games. But I do own this one. And you can see they, they were able to paint in more details on the gun and the chest plate and things like that. Um, so, you know. But still, I think for the time, they did a good job on the details of Samus here. She's got the green inside this uh, circular part in her hand there. They did um, excellent detailing on her joints. You can see, especially if you look on her, on her back. Like you can see where the, the knee joints are and the elbow as well. Um, see the detailing inside the armor there. It's pretty cool. Uh, I like the detailing here on her back. With the little jet boosters she has for her space jumps. Um, now, as far as, uh, posability goes, that's where this figure runs into some limitations. These huge shoulder pads here very much limit what you could do with the arms. 
to only come up this far, only go back that much and forward a little bit. The elbows work perfectly fine. Um, no bend at the wrist. Actually, no, there is a bend at the wrist. Look at that. So the elbows work good. Same with her gun hand here. You can get very limited range of motion, but uh, you can bend it at the elbow. There it goes. The legs will come up, but again, they do this weird angle thing, so you can't give it her into any natural, like, seated positions. But she's got good knee joints. They come back about yay far. Ankle pivot right there. She's very squeaky. Like all the joints make a squeaking sound when you're moving her around. Very loud figure to play with. So you're not going to get a whole lot of good poses out of her. Mostly you're just going to have her standing and vaguely aiming at something in front of her. But again, just the uh, size and um, the colors I think really pop out on this thing. Now speaking of the colors, this is um, very orange and very yellow. Um, this figure kind of reminds me a little bit of the way she was depicted on the cover of uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus back in the Game Boy era. You can see some of the similarities there, but the more I look at it, the more I've come to realize that she's actually closer based on her appearance in the original Super Smash Bros. for um, Nintendo 64. The colors match up, as do the knee pad. You see these bits here are a little more rounded than they are in a lot of interpretations of the character, and that comes directly from the um, Super Nintendo game. Now, Samus does come with one accessory. She comes with a... Oops, let me get it in frame right. She comes with a spare head. Now you can do one of two things with this head. You can, uh, let's see if we get it right. There. You could uh, pose her holding it like that, like a grizzly trophy. I mean, she is a bounty hunter after all. <laughs> I'm sure not all of her adventures involve space pirates. But uh, that's disturbing. You're not supposed to do that. Now what you're supposed to do, which is equally disturbing is pry off her head here which when you do it makes like this horrible screechy <laughs> sort of sound it fits in really tight and it's hard to get the helmet off and so normally I don't bother I always feel like I'm going to break something when I'm doing this you hear it protesting I'm gonna take her off camera to pop her head off because I don't want my arm in the shot so what I'm going to do so you don't get bored is give you a giant Metroid to look at while I'm doing that. Alright. Come on, Mr. Noggin. Hey. Yeah, I told you, this thing snaps on really good. And doesn't want to come off. There we go. I can't say I blame it. I wouldn't want my head popping off either. Alright, so here's a headless Samus. I bet you didn't think you'd be looking at one of those when you woke up this morning. And so you take the spearhead and you pop it in place. Come on. There we go. Oops. Yeah. Not in all the way, but I want to be able to pop it back out later. And here's Samus with helmet off. And that's pretty cool. Um, as I said, this was made, I believe, in uh, 2001, which was before the um, Zero Suit became a thing. So this is before um, Samus started being depicted always with a ponytail with her uh, helmet off. So let's get in on her new face. It's a rather nice face. Again, it doesn't completely match up with the uh, modern versions of the character, like from Other M, where we see her more often without her um, 
mask on, but I think most Metroid fans would agree that that's no big loss. Uh, the hair flows down nicely over the back of, uh, you know, her uh, armor. And again, just like we did with her severed head, and this is, I think, a little more appropriate. You can uh, have her holding her helmet if you're able to wedge it in just right. And you could definitely display her like that if you wanted to. Personally, I always display her with the regular helmet on. It's just the look of the character for me. So there we go, decapitating her again. And the helmet, as you see, goes on a lot easier than it comes off. And that might be the last time I ever take it off, so hope you enjoyed. So, if you want one of these for yourself, well, good luck with that. They are quite expensive. Um, I managed to get a good deal on mine online. This was several years ago. I've had this uh, sucker for a while. Um, currently, they range well over $100 used. $120, $150. You're looking over $200 if you want one uh, new in box. And I've been told that the packaging for this thing was pretty cool. That it had like a history of the character up to that point. Maybe like some kind of fold out thing. If I'm remembering correctly. But I've never seen a physical copy. So I couldn't tell you a hundred percent. But um, but they are rather expensive. Personally it might be worth your time just getting on one of the smaller um, uh, World of Nintendo. You know four inch tall figures. Which uh, will run you about 10 to 15 bucks. But uh, but if you really, really like this one and then and you felt like uh, tracking her down. When I when I picked this up, it was before they um, were making uh, Samus figures. And so, um, you know, was, if you wanted a Samus figure, you had to reach back in history <laughs> and uh, grab one of the older ones. Alright, so guys, this has been the Starving Martian and Samus Aran from Metroid. Hope you've enjoyed, guys. We'll catch up with you later. And until then, keep watching the skies.